I am unashamed. What about you? So, Dad, you had an interesting uh, visitor this week. You know, you're at the end of the road. I've always found this fascinating. Literally, you're at the end of the road, surrounded three sides by water. That's right. And now, because of the show, Duck Dynasty, you also have a gate because they condemned the last quarter mile of the road. So you're at the end of the road, surrounded by water with a gate, and yet you, you have the most interesting guests that somehow – continue to come to you. It's almost like the Almighty just sends you people. I don't know. It's a weird... It's always been so that it's way. It's like if, if you squat on it, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They call people well, river, you know, yeah, river right. squatters, river, river squatters. rats. That's right. I talked to a, a couple of interesting gentlemen this past week. Uh, one of them was uh, the former the head of the, uh, what is it, uh, urban housing? Oh, yeah, Dr. Carson. Dr. Carson. Ben Carson. So you did a... Like Someone a, got a hold of me and said, uh, Dr. Carson wants to talk with you. And I thought, I said, you know, Dr. Carson, a brain surgeon. <laughs> I said, when brain surgeons start consorting with redneck duck call makers, trust me when I tell you the times are... are we're living in trying times. That's right. Well, it's just like, it was just like we had Corolla on, who's an atheist, and here we are, Christians, hey, and yet we're, we're all kind of come as we're pulling together. We're very normal, consorting with some very strange individuals. <laughs> yeah, right. But Dr. Carson is a, is a good man, good godly man. I heard and, y'all uh, got to going back and forth some pretty good scriptures. Is he what wants I heard. Uh, he wants to form uh, a movement of sorts, uh, faith at the first part of it, faith, uh, freedom, community, life. Yeah, and uh, he put those four things together and said, "I would like to uh, pursue uh, these things for the next few years." I jokingly said, uh, "Being." It may be that uh, you have uh, the possibility you might run for the next president of the United States because it's a pretty well thought out program here. Mm-hmm. And he basically said, "We'll see what the Lord says." Yeah. But uh, it it uh, it's a group of individuals. I mean, think about it. It's hard to argue with, you know, Those faith, four, freedom, yeah. community, and life. Right. That's uh, yeah. that's sound thinking on his part. Well, so we met with him. We talked, and uh, I don't know where that'll go, but uh, I feel like I told him I was behind him all the way in whatever endeavor. Uh, I jokingly told him about when rednecks and and brain surgeons get together. <laughs> Trying times there, Ben. <laughs> That's right. But he leaves. I mean, that that was over. But then someone else came along and said, do you have time to meet with uh, – uh, an emissary, I guess you could call him, uh, from Pope Francis over in Italy. I thought, an <laughs> emissary. The current, the current Pope? The current Pope. So they said the current now, Pope. Now I would have said right there. <laughs> what I was told. <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> well, uh, well uh, you know, the, the, the joke would be on you. Uh, <laughs> so he basically, the, the my nephew Gimber, yep. he said, uh, I have a man with me. Uh, he was sent by the Pope. The Pope, he handpicked 10 men, according to the emissary and Gimber. Said he, he picked 10 men, Pope Francis did, sent them worldwide, and uh, just to simply carry the message of Jesus to the world. Hmm. So... I wonder why he didn't do Us, 12. Huh? I wonder why he didn't do 12. I don't know. I would have gone with 12. But I'm not, who am I? <laughs> you You're no me. Pope, I, I'm not the Pope either. <laughs> well. And, okay. uh, and uh, so basically. I like that, though. I like his thinking. I mean, that's a good idea. I 10, said, 12, 10, 12. So he asked me about a time frame, and I said, I'll tell you what. Bring him down, to, you know, on Thursday at 4 o'clock, whenever it was. I said, oh, so this happened. Yeah, I said, Boy, this I, is I riveting. Uh, I, I I don't know where this is my CTV. I just thought, here's the opportunity. A man who's been told to go worldwide, like in the book of Acts, relative to that, go. 
And go so preach, he's go, coming to you. Yeah, yeah. Jesus' final words, I mean, before he departed and went back into heaven, go preach the gospel. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go go uh, make disciples of all nations and baptize them. Yeah, so, but you know what? The end of that phrase says, and to the ends of the earth. And so they, you must have been in the category, <laughs> the ends Way down the line. <laughs> of the earth. So the yeah. backstory, and Dad probably doesn't even know this, because I talked to Gimber and told him to call you, is that this guy was in Monroe, you know, in this region. Oh, you in contacted Gimber. Well, he called, John called me, right, and, and told me this guy was coming, told me the story. And I was kind of like, Jazz, I was like, are you are you being for real? And he said, yeah, he's, he's in Louisiana, but he's in Monroe, and he's aware of the family because he's like, he's watched the show, The Emissary. And, really? and he are wanted we talking to, about the Pope or this guy? This guy, The Emissary. Okay. So he said he wants to meet somebody from the family. I said, well, we're all gone. I'm gone. Jason, I said, the only person he could probably meet was Dad because Dad's just, you know, hanging out at the river. Duck season's over. I said, just call Dad and see if he has time to meet with us. So that, that's how it happened. So, so the so, meeting took place. So he was at the ends of the earth in Louisiana. And since I knew from what Gimber had told me, uh, I took a piece of paper. Where is it? Hand me up. Let me see. I took a piece of paper, and what I did was – Stay by the mic as you're doing this. If the cameraman can catch up with this, uh, you can hold it up. When you I get gave there. the well, emissary. They, look, they have graphics. They can I knew play. he was going worldwide. <laughs> Turn so it around and show it to the camera. I, I gave him this God become flesh, arrow coming out of heaven, died on the cross, buried in a tomb, raised from the dead. The first thing I told the emissary when he entered my home, <laughs> when he sat down, I said, Well, yeah, did you wear no robe? Huh? Did he have a robe on, or what was he wearing? Yeah, he had he had uh, religious attire on. Okay, yeah. Black suit, uh, white collar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I thought, okay. So he sits down, and I said, since you're going worldwide, is it my my understanding is you've been picked by the Pope to go worldwide with nine other men? I said uh, you stopped in Monroe here to uh, chat a little bit with me. I said, uh, so where where do you go from now? For, from here. What's your next stop? And I think he said Pakistan. He named off several countries. Oh wow! I'm on my way to Pakistan. I said, when this you guy get the- must have got the short straw. <laughs> Maybe I mean, what I'm saying, he comes to the backwoods of Louisiana. Oh, and look, we're going to leave there and go to Pakistan. Yeah. Anyone with a job, as he stated it, to carry the message of Jesus to the world. Yep, I'm in. Yep. I'm all in. I don't care what, what you call yeah, yourself. I agree. Yeah. So as a man saying he's fixing to go worldwide, I said, make sure you give him this. And I went through it with him while he was sitting on the couch. Yep. I said, God become fly. I said, by the way, I uh, told the first time I ever met the, the just past the previous president, Donald Trump, the first thing I told him was what I'm showing you. I said, God did become flesh, right? Yeah. I said, he died on the cross for the sins of the world, was bad, and I just went through the... Did he seem intrigued when you were going through it? I mean, what He did. Was... Yeah. Did He's he have very... a title? What What was his title sent out? Or uh, Gimmer was calling him the Pope, since he was one of the Pope's men. The emissary men. of the Pope. Emissary yeah. of the Pope. Yeah. It's what I gathered from it, but you'll have to check it, whatever. Because <laughs> some of this stuff made it on the Internet, because he after I showed him... Make sure you do this. And he said, I do not disagree with anything you're saying, Mr. Robinson. It is glad that you stand on that message there. He said, we're saying the same thing, but I may be using some different wordage. <laughs> some, I was thinking, some Latin, maybe. I was thinking, what kind of words would you use differently? <laughs> Jesus died, was buried, and raised from the dead. Well, the semantics. The semantics. Right. So I thought, well, so I showed him that, yep. and I said, you know, and we need to teach our people to uh, don't think that they're going to church once they come to Jesus. Put mm-hmm. their faith in this message that he did come in flesh. He died, was buried, and raised from the dead. It is the gospel. He's at the right hand of God interceding for us. So I gave him the big picture from my viewpoint, which was pretty plain and pretty simple and hard to get around. I alluded to the book of Acts where we are now. We're still doing the same thing. That was our task. He's, he got up off the couch and said, the popes had them in his hand and gave me these two crosses. And, uh, and he had a couple of crosses. They were silver 
color did I get? They might have probably were silver, but he just handed me two crosses. He said, the Pope gave these to me to give to you. And he said, he would like the Pope a duck call. And I said, well, <laughs> I said, and he said, but are I would we, like, I would like to know <laughs> what he's receiving. What, what, what is that call? What, what exactly we're, we're doing here? And I said, well, I said, I walked over, I reached over and got it off my rack next to my weapon, and my duck calls are all in one spot there, you know. So you took and one of your duck calls I had my off Bible, you. my AR-15, and my duck calls <laughs> waiting on the Pope. So I'm sitting there, and I thought, well, I said, here's a mallard hen uh, that we, I learned how to do. I blew the mallard hen call. The, the, I, I blew the uh, uh, teal call. I sounded like a, a widgeon for him and a pintail and a gadwall. And I showed him these various ducks that we had made over the years. He brought his cell phone out. He said, would you do that for me, for my niece? And, and he told me his niece. I forgot her name because she would love to hear from you too. And I'm sure the Pope will really appreciate the duck call if you'll sign it for him. <laughs> so I signed him a duck call, showed him how to use it in case he was duck hunting over in Italy. And uh, so I sent him, the, sent him that. So I did a little blurb uh, with the Pope. Had the, he had the, the cell phone up like that and watching me call ducks. And I said, one thing you can learn while you're on planet Earth, while you're bringing the message out to the people, uh, is that if you learn how to sound like birds, you might become a millionaire. It's just a thought. <laughs> so I gave him that information that uh, it, it pays. Was this to, guy an American? Or is he? Yeah. Oh, he was American. Okay. Yeah, he told me he's from the Midwest, maybe, okay. Missouri, whatever. Yeah. Had been, been handpicked by the Pope. Yep. So and I just gave him a charge when he went forth, preach the gospel, stand on it, don't budge. And you gave him a duck call demonstration. Gave him a duck call demonstration so he, that and he's told him to give, tell, tell your people, whether it's Pakistani or whoever, when they come to Jesus, tell them that they don't, going to church is really not the way they should think. They should think in terms of, I changed my lifestyle and I offer myself as a living sacrifice. He's, and he said something like, Romans 12. I said, yeah, Romans 12. Put that into practice. Man, I wish I would have been in on this conversation. Because look, you know who they have doing their... Uh, a commercial is Lou Holtz, yeah, football guy. He does that, that good ca- guy, yeah. Catholic uh, commercial. Yeah, but there's one part of it I just I cringe every time he says it. I mean, he goes through, he talks about the sacrament and confession, and we are saving you a seat, you know, Sunday morning on the bench and getting the game, and but then he says the goal because he's like we evangelize Jesus, but he's like this will you know getting in the game will keep your your. Uh, your eye on the goal, and then he says, and the goal is heaven. That sounds good, but I'm like, well, the goal is Jesus. I mean, I wish they would change that. Yeah. You know, I want to go to heaven because I want to be with Jesus. You got to remember something. What? I was not attempting. No, I know. I, know. I was not I just, attempting. I was chasing a rabbit. To, <laughs> I, I, was, I was not attempting to to get into semantics Right. About all Which the, is my point. Look, we you look, know look I, I love the man for taking Jesus to the world. Yeah. I love Thank the Pope you. for sending him. That's right. Uh they're on our side. They're not against mm-hmm. us. They're for us. Yeah. So I'm just saying, I just gave him a charge. It's in, in redneck language, gave him a little charge mm-hmm. and uh stand on the gospel, my man. Go forth. Now let's talk about these silver cross it. Right, hang on, hang on, Jess. Let's take a break. So one of the things uh we talk about a lot on the podcast since we're three aging men, you know, <laughs> dad calls us the young bucks, Jays, but we're, I mean, I'm getting as old as Methuselah. I'm, I'm closer to 60 than I am to 50 now, dad, after my yeah, last birthday. So, you, you know, you're about to have a 60 year old son, which yeah, I don't know. How I'm to, still in my seventies. I know it. You'll still be in your seventies when I hit 60. That's the, that's the, what happens when you get married at <laughs> 16, 17. Well, you told us if you wait until they get educated, you probably never have a chance. So that's I think right. you're probably right. So one of the things, the product that we love is uh, Omega XL, uh, which is uh, basically it helps your body fight inflammation 
inflammation, uh, which is basically your pain source. And these days you need that. You need that. And uh, so dad and I both uh, use it. It has helped us a lot, taking care of a lot of aches and pains. I got Jay some. I don't know if he's you ain't started it yet. Started. You got to get started. I'm you gotta, waiting on the inflammation. You got <laughs> You got to get to with every meal. So here's how, if you want to check these guys out, uh, you can go to omegaxl.com slash fill. You buy your first bottle, you get your second bottle free. So it's a couple of months supply. OmegaXL.com slash Phil, or you can give them a call at 800-844-4888. That's 800-844-4888. Well, he handed me the cross just and told me, he said, How uh, big were these the things? Pope went from his hand to my hand. I don't know what that meant, but he said, well, he handed me these, he said, give him these. Do you think it was like, like solid silver or silver plate? <laughs> You know, I'm not. A, I need to look not at not allergical. You know, I wouldn't know, <laughs> but I'm just saying. Uh, one of the brothers up up there, well, who, t- who, who uh, if you were Catholic, who had a Catholic background, right. He's jumping up and down. Well, that's what I'm saying. Said, you, he told told somebody to tell me to tell Robinson, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to mention this. There's a family that has been with us for a long time, and so they're they all grew up. They're a very strong yeah. Catholic family. But through the years, we've been able to teach them some more in depth. That's right. You know, had the opportunity, and they still have held on to their family, you know, being Catholic. But at the yep. same time, they sure. meet with us sometimes. But anyway, I was saying about them because to a Catholic, because my son-in-law comes from a Catholic family as well, my youngest, and you know, to them, if it comes from the Pope, it's a big deal. I mean, like it's a to you and I, we're just kind of you know, we're not Catholic, so it doesn't mean that much to us. But but well, you it, say that, but it, I remember one time Phil had a Catholic Bible. And uh, the first, it, it, I think there was a section, and you, you may remember this better than me. It's like what we believe, and this was like 300, I think, A.D. Remember that? There was yep. a quote. That, par- that paragraph that says this was our declaration of faith or what we believe in 300, Yeah, it's amazing how much that has evolved. Yeah. From from what it was, I mean, because what I read in that paragraph was pretty much Acts chapter two. Yeah, it w- it was a reworded Acts chapter two. This, you have to remember, this. my approach was simple. The opportunity was there. The man was fixed to go worldwide. I was just giving him a charge to preach the gospel. Yeah, I book think of you Acts. Did. You did. You handled it beautifully. Well, that's my point. Phil. I'm saying, no matter how much time. I mean, I don't care who's going forth and who's. I, yeah. I right. just wanted him to the name of Jesus. Take it worldwide. Going into Pakistan, uh, loaded with uh, you know Muhammad and whatever, uh, and all kinds of doctrines out there. So right. I appreciate anybody taking yeah. going forth. So I think the Pope did a good deal. Yeah, he appointed some guys to that's, go forth. Did you, t- did you did you think amazing. to tell the guy that uh, that you'd been that we'd been to the Vatican that you filmed there? I told him you we told met. Him about that? We, I said we met outside in the in the main yeah. courtyard, Saint Peter's, whatever. I said we visited. He said you visited there. I said I visited there. Yeah, it was impressive to see. They had statues of Peter and Paul. Oh yeah, and all of them. We what, went what to the into. we went to the place uh, supposedly. Where Paul was beheaded, I which, was trying to let him know that we all together, we meaning the people who have bowed their knee to Jesus, the Son of God, right. and what He did, what He's now doing, and what He will do. I'm all in with anybody who goes forth with the yeah, message of me the too. cross and the resurrection. Well, and, and I think we've seen it, and we've seen in our culture that just in your lifetime, what's happened if you turn on each other. People that and, and get uh, caught or ostracize up in, everybody that doesn't agree with every minute detail say, in the Bible. Right. Well, I had we two, already have so many groups. I was just simply trying to say, let's yeah. all get together let's, and and, yeah. and this is a great time to talk to you. Let's stand on the gospel. Let's yeah. preach that. And um, if and until there's a mass repentance and people do bow their knee to Jesus, I said if they decide not to do that, I said these empires. Uh, I think your name was Jim. I said Jim, these empires. As you've noted, they all rise and they all fall, in my opinion, on their view or lack of their view of God, the God of heaven. Right. That's what yeah. brings them down. And that's what's bringing this one down well, if we're God, not careful. God right. gave us the 
message of reconciliation. That is correct. Jesus. We ought to be about bringing people together. That a could, lot of people who would say, well, what are you doing talking to them? Because they have a different name and they they have creeds. I told him, I said, be be short on the creeds and church doctrine, Jim, and be long on Jesus' death on a cross. No. He said, he said, can I have that? I said, you sure can. I, I gave it to him, and he yeah. said, I, I'm going to remember this, Mr. Robinson. I, yeah, said, hey. I think you did good, Phil, to if somebody's sent out and he's he's out trying to make the world a better place, give him give him some bullets. That only you would. <laughs> don't think like that. I, I think that was you did. I didn't I ask think, that that meeting yeah. happened. I just agreed to have the meeting. And looking back on it, I love the guy, and he, he go. He's going forth. And uh, think about it, Al. You, you jump into, you you start jumping into Pakistan and some of these countries. Oh yeah. In other words, it's a dangerous journey he's on. Yeah, and uh, well, you know what you did that. So so I'm working on a sermon for Sunday that may be next Sunday because of the weather. But from Acts 18. To jump ahead a little bit, you did basically. The, remember the couple Priscilla and Aquila. Yep. Mm-hmm. And this this guy comes in, Apollos, and he's very talented. And but he had only known about John's baptism. He didn't really. He taught about Jesus accurately. Yeah. Though he only knew the baptism of John. Right. Because he didn't. He didn't know yet about the things were a little bit different. What about the ones who had John's baptism, but the day of Pentecost? Where the spirit was not given right. with John's baptism, exactly, he's given now. Well, it's a it's an important. So point. this couple took it upon themselves. They they went to the synagogue. They're hearing this guy teach, and they're like, "Man, this guy is amazing. He's doing great." But they noticed he he didn't under, he didn't know everything yet. So they said, "Hey, why don't you come over to the house? We'll fix you a little meal." And they and the Bible says they taught him the way more adequately. Just they just gave him a little bump. Of, here's some here's something you don't know. To do that, it, it reminds me of exactly what you did. Yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, the bottom, wow, the wow, that he listed like five things that were. Where's that at? Eighteen. X eighteen. Yeah, you know, the the list is incredible. He says he was a learned man. That that was in uh, eighteen twenty four. Paul, he said he was a learned man. So was it that he was just unintelligent? Yeah, that's right. Smart guy. Smart guy. Educated. With a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. Which would be the Old Testament. Knew the Bible. This Jim was the same, the, the emissary. He mm-hmm. had a he, thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord. Same way with so, Jim. So yep. it wasn't like he just had the Old until He realized the Old Testament led to Jesus. To Jesus and so he had that. Now, I, was, here, I was very aware of that. Now, that, this is, then it gets better. And he spoke with great fervor. Because yep. not only was he intelligent, a lot of intelligent people... That may not translate into being dynamic speakers, yeah. but in this case, great fervor, great mm-hmm. oration. Uh, one of the things they told me about this individual that's coming from the Pope, he is a, uh, what do they call him, a speaker? What do they call him? A Motivational he's speaker. A motivational speaker. Mm-hmm. When he told me that, I said, that, that's good news. Yep. That's the information I gathered before he showed up. Right. Yeah. I said, well, the motivational speaker, I'll try to motivate him so to, motiv- smart, so to he, motivate the other. But then the, the fifth thing was, and he taught about Jesus accurately. That's right. I mean, look, when I hear that, so you just think, learn man, thorough knowledge of the scriptures. Jim knew the Pope, the the Pope's fervor. man. He knew exactly who Jesus was. He believed he was the Son of God. Of course, God then he said, flesh, virgin birth. Catholics are big on that. Yep. So he had only knew the baptism of John. Then that statement, it said, he, he was speaking boldly, and then they invited him to their home to explain the way of God more adequately. Point being, unite on Jesus, talk about other things and ways we can do it, but keep that. The center. I, mean, I was basically telling him, uh, keep it simple, Jim. Just keep it simple. The good news of the gospel of Jesus. And I was basically saying, don't worry too much about signage. Yeah. Meaning signs outside that says the sub, this group that, meets that. here, that yeah. move. I wish we were all together on it more so. I basically tried to get that point across to him. Said, let, let, let's all get together here, right. whether it be Carson, I don't know what group he's with. Seventh day. Seventh day Adventist. Then you have the Catholics. You're, what are you going to do? Hate them? I mean, they believe in Jesus, so I don't mind sitting down with anybody, well, including I like them, that. or I like atheists, that. or anybody well, else. I like that this, you, this, we started this discussion with the fact that these, you had these two conversations. And again, these are three very different groups and, and backgrounds and traditions. I've and, talked to a brain surgeon. 
uh, emissary from the Pope and an atheist with Corolla this morning, and I love them all, so I don't see the downside. Well, I think you said it. These times that we're in is a rally point Yeah, because the culture is going under yeah. in a big way. Yeah. And so the enemies are so evident, and if you don't band together, <laughs> you know, you we'll read, end up splitting hairs, no, and we'll end up like the, the Jews new, arguing about this, Sadducee, the Pharisee, we believe this, you believe that. Phil, pick, that's what's pick, going pick. on. I know it. Look, when you read the New Testament, you know what the things that come up? There is a time to alienate. When people are anti-Jesus. That's right. right. The Antichrist, or you know, don't believe that Jesus yeah. is the Son of God. Or it's a character issue that they claim Jesus, but their life is the evil activity going in it, going on in it, is in direct contradiction. That right. so, and you confront them. You, I mean, there's a couple of verses about disfellowshipping someone right. in that light, but all this other stuff. Now he's talking about you know warnings and discussions, and but no alienation. That's no. right. And ultimately pull together. Let's take another break. Jace, one of uh, our favorite sponsors you and I enjoy is Helix Sleep. They make a very good mattress. Love it. And uh, we've got them in different locations because we love them so much. And you went on the – did your little two-minute uh, quiz or whatever they call it where you got to find out with you. You know, but Missy brought something up interesting, so you might ought to keep this in mind. She said, you put on there that you're a side sleeper. I said, well, yeah. She said, but you start off on your side. You end up on your back snoring to the moon. <laughs> so you got to remember, just because you think you sleep a certain way, so, I mean, she had a valid point. So when you go take the quiz, ask your wife. Ask your, your wife okay. before you continue. So if you want to check these guys out, it's a great mattress, uh, like I said, we love them. Helix Sleep, H E L I X Sleep dot com slash unashamed. Uh, you get two free pillows if you go check them out now, and two hundred dollars off your first purchase. So that's a really good deal. That's Helix Sleep dot com slash unashamed, and get some good sleep. I By had, the way, uh, Jim did not fit into this category. He was not one of these. Mark this. Meaning, write this down. Make sure you remember this. This is Second Timothy 3. Uh, there will be terrible times in the last days. We've been in the last days since Jesus showed up. People will be lovers of m themselves, true. They'll be lovers of money, true. They'll be boastful, yeah. Proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without hope, unforgiving. The woke crowd, think about them you know, tearing down statues, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. That was not the emissary that, that the Pope Francis sent out. Right. This man was a godly man. Yep. He believed in Jesus. Yep. And he came by and I gave him some encouraging words with the gospel being the centerpiece of my, of my wordage. With but look how many character and issues are in that list. And, and even that, when you read the book of First Corinthians, if there was ever uh, some kind of manifesto for, <laughs> for having problems and, and still being considered followers of Jesus, the, I mean, I, 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 you're probably not going to find a church as bad Right. Around the who's corner. To, who's to say that the God of heaven, working through one, a brain surgeon, was behind that meeting, and who's to say he didn't send the guy that came from Italy? Oh, I think he absolutely did. I mean, so, I don't think there's any doubt about it. It's divine appointment. Because God knew what I was going to tell him. Right. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> right. He knew that. You know, you mentioned that about churches, Jay. So Priscilla and Aquila... They were from Corinth. You know, Paul had been in Corinth, and then they tagged along mm -hmm. with him when he left. And so, you know, and we know how many problems the church had in Corinth. Mm -hmm. But look at this couple. In fact, my, my sermon is is less on Apollos, which was interesting. You had a, a good take on him. But more, I'm focusing more on them because it's a, it's a sermon about marriage and ministry. And this couple, what I loved about it is they saw, they wanted, they worked together. 
You know, you were talking about you and Missy and talking mm-hmm. about the stuff she's doing, and Lisa and I are the same way, and you and Mom are the same way. We do ministry together. Like, whether I'm specifically doing something or her or we're doing it together, we're on the same page. Well, right. One of, one of the girls in Missy's Bible study, she's a Catholic, and uh, she comes. and Because they, they're, they're studying the Bible, and they're focused on Jesus, period. They're not trying to... Get somebody make, to leave make, someplace and go someplace. And, right. Look, I had two people call me this week. These, both these friends are friends that I've been with for 20 years, over 20 years. And uh, one of them was a, the famous conversion. We, we told his conversion on here. I shared Jesus with another guy, and this guy was in another room after he declared he wanted nothing to do with anything religious. Yeah. He heard about Jesus, the guy who was the target, the target said, to heck with y'all. He didn't say that. <laughs> Worse than that. I get up, thought, oh, well. In fact, he was almost threatening. Like, not only do I not want to do this, I like to hurt people like y'all. I mean, it was very... <laughs> <laughs> You're not... He wasn't open to the... No. Bar. He wasn't open to so the... So this guy tears out, squalls, tires. You're right, I'm out of here. I'm going to go get drunk on y'all tonight. Okay. I mean, you got to remember, we were young back then. We were young. We were young. And so the fellow who overhears the conversation, because this was the hangout. This is where they all went and did drugs and got drunk. But the guy who owned the house had come to Jesus a week before, and all these crazed rebels hadn't got the memo (laughs) that this is no longer. They were still hanging around. Yeah, the (laughs) den of iniquity. This place has been perked. Well, that guy who overheard it had just lost his dad and became one of our best friends. Yeah. He was cut to the heart and said, I want in. That was his phrase. And I, like an idiot, because I didn't even know who he was. I I had forgotten the, I don't want to hear this, as he passed by. I said, in on what? He said, I I overheard that. I'm ready. He said, I I want you to baptize me right now. Yeah. Uh, It was just incredible. Anyway, well, he, he called me and another one of my old friends, two different situations, and they were like, look, just wanted to bring your attention. You know, I was reading on Facebook, and I was like, let me just stop you right there, because I didn't know what was coming next. I was like, if you're calling me based on something you read in Facebook, just make it brief, because I don't know. I, didn't, I just didn't like it from the start. But he was like, well, there were some people that used to you know, go to our church or whatever. He's like, they were downing you on Facebook. And I was like, it does not bother me. What 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 was the accusation? And he said, well, the accusation was that you will meet with any group of people that love Jesus. And so I kept waiting for the next part. <laughs> you kept waiting for the bad part? I said, <laughs> period? That was it? I said, well, yeah. I, I said that and believe it. And he's like, yeah, but they're, they were implying, you know, in the next sentence, that you compromise like the way you were raised or your particular denomination. Mm-hmm. And I was like, <clears throat> and he's like, that it just bothers me that they're slamming you for that. And uh, he said, so well, the reason he was calling me is he's like, cause I couldn't help it. I had to respond. I was like, look, you don't, here's my deal. If that is the accusation and people are bent out of shape on that, I was like, we're not policemen, and they shouldn't be God's policemen. Right. And even though I don't see how anybody in the world who loves Jesus would have a problem with that, I just don't think it's in our place to have those conversations mm-hmm. on a social media site. That, that's what I said. I, mean, I could be wrong. I was like, I'd rather you not get involved. But actually, you know, actually, that. Jay's, you should. I mean, him doing it's better than you doing it. My, my approach to that has always been, because we're public figures. I mean, you may be right. And so what happens is I never respond. I see stuff that's against one of y'all or me. I don't see it, because I don't read I it. I see it sometimes. Or like one of our listeners sent me one, because a discussion we had here, and it was, I guess it was something I said about you and I having a, another home. And, and this person took a shot at us because all these people, why should they have two homes when there's people starving? Yeah. But, so the guy sent it to me because, again, it bothered him. But when I looked down and when he sent it, he just sent me a screenshot. There were all these people defending us. You don't know these people. You don't know what all they do. And all these people were defending. I thought, I never want to go in there and try to defend myself because 
other people that know you, they'll defend you, which is what then, he was doing. But my point is, but it doesn't any, matter. I any agree with time that. you spend in that is a waste of time. I would rather just share Jesus. I mean, look, I'll I'll make a confession. I I did this, and I shouldn't have done it. Hang and, on, hang on. We got to take a break if you're about to make a confession. Oh, I'm gonna bear my soul here. <laughs> All right, let's so see. I I live in Austin, some and I live here, and I have a couple places of worship or however you want to characterize it. People who love Jesus that I meet in Louisiana, well in Austin I've met at two I think. Well the two that I was going to meet with they were both meeting outside only, and it was cold. So I was like, <laughs> I don't want to go meet outside. It's like 40 degrees, you know, I mean, it just sounded miserable to me. So I was like, well, let's just look around and, and find enough. Let's, let's be creative. You know, let's, let's take a dare. Here's where I messed up this confession I'm making. So first I was just looking for churches that were going to meet inside. <laughs> and so, so, so your, your first, <laughs> your first priority was you got to be meeting inside. <laughs> yeah, the sins, the list of mistakes are going to get long in this process. <laughs> well, here's what, here's what kind of made me mad. Most of the churches that I felt like I would be my, my belief system, even though I just said, and somebody I've said many times, hey, if you love Jesus, let's go. Yeah. We'll spit out the bone. Right. But I was trying to kind of look at places where I thought that most of my surrounding beliefs yeah. would line up. And like the top three or four, they weren't even meeting because of the coronavirus, which then made me look at them in a negative light. <laughs> I was, they're all online. I was like, this is, we're past a year. Give people the option. So, they're out because yeah. they're not meeting. Then the ones outside, I thought, it's cold. <laughs> Just have us a place. So they're out. Well, then here's where I messed up. This was going to confess. I then started looking because I, as I went down like to the second and third Google page, I started thinking, well, this crew, this crew here looks a little interesting. You know, let's see what they believe. Well, then I got into the here's and here's what we believe. When I started reading some of this stuff to Missy, and look, I did not find one group because some of these lists were long. When they put what we believe, I mean, it went on for days, <laughs> which made me think, why are they putting this on here? Why don't they just put, we believe Jesus you? is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. I'll come to that. But they felt like they had to get way down into the wheat. Look, every site had these same things in mm -hmm. these churches. And I found stuff I, I just didn't agree with, which made me think, well, I, I'm not going there. So after we went through all that, I told Missy, I said, We're just staying home. I, I said, well, she said, Let's just stay home. <laughs> I and, knew that's where this And I was said, You know what? I said, I made a mistake. And I want to confess it to you right now. She said, What? I said, I never should have read. No. I said, That's where I went wrong. I told. I said, They shouldn't have written it, and I shouldn't have read it. I told the emissary from the Pope. I said, whatever you do, just keep it simple. I said, point them to Jesus. Preach the message about Jesus, the cross, the resurrection. I mm. said, keep it simple. I said, you don't have to bring out the creeds that y'all have and the various doctrines. I said, just tell them the good news about Jesus and move on. Yeah. I said, you'd be way better off. Right. That was my advice to him. You know what? It's still sound advice. It's good advice. So after my confession, Missy said, well, where do you want to go? I said, I want to go right here. And we, we decided, I, I can't even remember what the name of it was. It seemed a little more rowdy than what I would normally go, but I said, let's go right here. Because it was the closest. Yep. We went, even though, like, if I'd have read that, I read the page, yep. there was a couple things that I categorically disagree with, that they put, this is what we believe. Do I think it's a big deal? No. But i just saying, I did not agree with their theology, and, and I sure didn't agree that they should put it down there, yep. which I know that makes people uncomfortable. You're like, well, why? Because I'm like, we're all disagreeing. Once you get in on the perimeters of things that we do in Jesus— this this happened to be about plus not only that, Jace. You remember, <clears throat> you know, our mentor that taught us the Bible and the one that led Dad to Christ. He would always say, "Well, in my study, 
and then he would oh he would say it. here's where I'm at here's where I'm at now. now because we watched him over the course of his life a lot of stuff that he preached and taught earlier later on revealed that I you know I was wrong about that past. So, well, the so number that's one the, thing about the it. number one disagreement that that I had with most of them was about the 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 closing statement would all be we're awaiting the kingdom of God right. to be established in the next life and where we'll be a part and you know I'm like well I believe it's here now I'm going to believe we're a part of it I believe the kingdom is bigger than that right but I believe we're a part of it right now the kingdom is here and so, does that mean I don't love them? No. Does that mean, what if I'm wrong? I mean, I feel really passionate that I'm right about it. <laughs> how many and I feel like you're. How many arguments have you had with your best friend over that particular? I made sure hundreds. <laughs> Jesus, this may help. I made sure if I give all I possess to the poor, and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. I don't care who you're talking to. Love is kind, no matter who you're talking to. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's not proud. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So when I was talking to the guy who was fixed to go worldwide that the Pope had sent, that's all I wanted. I loved him, and that's all I wanted him to do was go forth and show that, yeah. those qualities, mm -hmm. and with the gospel as the centerpiece. That's right. I love it. I think it's, it's exactly what we should be doing. It's not rocket science. <laughs> right. You know what's crazy is <clears throat> the other call I got was about a guy who we had brought to the Lord, posting on Facebook. I mean, this is weird. I get two of these calls because most times somebody would tell me that I wouldn't answer the phone, but I've known these guys for over 20 years. <laughs> my, my message to them was get off Facebook, you know, yeah. and do something else. But anyway, the other one was a guy we had brought to the Lord and, and it was like, well, he's really down in you on there. And of course, all I've ever tried to do is help that boy. And that situation was more of a, he was an abusive husband he was just breaking the law, just a constant pattern for years. And, of course, I know why he don't like me, because I'm like, stop breaking the law. <laughs> stop being, you know, committing mayhem in our community, not less just sinning against God. I mean, but in the name of Jesus, if you're going to claim to be Jesus. But anyway, what I found interesting was that he was saying that this fellow had a little group and, he, he had his salvation all worked out, and he was just telling me about it. And part of the thesis of it was is that he had died and come back to life. And so he was asking me. Which is another one of your favorite pet peeves. Hang on, Jason. Let's take one last break. Well, no, I just thought it was interesting. Remember I'm, you said that you'd only die because you, when people tell you they died, you know, five times or whatever. Well, right. Well, I immediately, when he was telling me the conversation, I went to the Hebrews 9. I said, well, I think the Bible is pretty clear in Hebrews 9, just as man is destined to die once and then face judgment. Now, there is a second death per revelation. You know, that may that death may be an eternal one. But so I said, well, you know, it's a mischaracterization, but I've already thought about that. I said, you know what it is? I said, here's what the deal is. Whenever someone doesn't want to conform to a life in Jesus, we know the reason. It's selfishness. Yep. They're selfish. I said, and then when you look at what they're posting and they themselves are emulating the gospel, they now have put their salvation in their death and their resurrection, whether it's he really wasn't dead or... I said, don't you think that's strange? That's why when people, when I say... You know, what's your story or what's your conversion? A lot of people that I've noticed in all the conversations I've had on couches and in cars, they'll tell you about some near-death experience, and they'll say, God, now they'll give credit to God for saving them in this physical realm. But I always say the same thing. In the end, it's not about what happened when you had a wreck and that God gave you another chance. What happened is what, what the power of salvation is when Jesus died. We're not worried about your death. What, what have you done? You are flawed, and you right. have no answer for that. 
That's why I think that's the difference. It always comes down to whether you're a self-seeker or you're wanting to point people to Jesus. Love is not self-seeking. That's right. 1 Corinthians 13, that verse 6. That's why the first call, look, it's not about agreeing in Jesus. It's about agreeing with them. And whatever narrative is surrounding their religious faith. If you don't believe the way we do, you're out. That's what they say. The gospel and the response to it cuts through a lot of false teaching. Right, Al? That's right. <clears throat> and, and uh, you know, I was, the sermon I'm working on, the, the opposite of Priscilla and Aquila working together is a married couple that works only to selfishly serve themselves. Mm-hmm. And you think about it, you go back to Genesis 3, the very first sin committed was really selfishness because, you know, Satan's whispering to Eve, and he said, you know, you, you can be like God, you know, if you eat this fruit. Mm-hmm. And and so she's like, she looks at it. It was, it was good. It was pleasing to the eye. It was good for food. And then she said, and, and she thought, who wouldn't want to be God? Well, to think about it, that's exactly that the very first sin was the sin of self. Yeah, and the big, and the big second one was uh, we should love one another. Do not be like Cain. There you go. Uh, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. Why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. That's right. So you start with the original sin, then throw that one in there, and you're like, don't be Selfish, like Cain. Selfishness well, went to murder in one generation. Yep. And then that went to the whole all mankind yeah. having every thought of wickedness. A lot of people miss that little text. That's First John chapter three, verse eleven. This is the message we heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Yep. You're like, it never fails. Nope. Uh, don't be like Cain, who murdered his brother. And somebody said, Why would he do that? His deeds were evil. That's he right. belonged to the evil one. That's right. Well, I'll tell you another. So miss, the stage miss is one. set for the rest of humanity, all the way down to right now. That's right. Sandwiched in between. What happened with Cain and what you said in the beginning, he he lied. He said, you will not surely die, the servant said to the woman, because she said, you know, we must not eat of it. Right. So he just lies. Yep. But then, he, he's the father then, but then he says something else. It wasn't just about doubting God. He made this statement in verse 5, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And so you say, well, what, what do you mean by that? Here's what he meant. He was saying, God knows, you know, what's going to happen, and you'll never reach your potential if you do it God's way. That's right. That's what he was implying. Yeah. He was saying, yeah, well, God knows what's going to happen if you do it, and he's keeping you from reaching your potential. Yeah. It, it's always going to come down to how you view yourself or how you view God. Self. What's, what's interesting is this was coming from a being, Satan, that was a f- fallen angel who chose himself not to follow God mm-hmm. and was fallen now and put on earth. So, I mean, what well, I'm saying maybe is... that was the original, which was pride, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. And maybe that, that, that uh, illustration... I, I just found that, it interesting that he appealed to the human, you know, desire to be your own God. I mean, in to essence, the, that's what he to said. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality... He'll give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There's going to be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile, for God does not show favoritism. Pretty powerful verse. It is. And uh, and you just touched on what we'll get into. That's Romans chapter 2, about verse 8 and following. When we get back to Acts um, next time, we're at a transition point with our story because so far we've just had this, you know, the apostles and what's happened in their action, but we're kind of going to hit the next generation of these new leaders, and now we got these converts, and you're going to Ananias start Ananias and Sapphira, they were self-seeking. It was a moment where they were self-seeking. Right. That was their problem. Yeah. That was their sin. Right. That's right. 
Yep. Exactly. Yep. Jay said it. it they were only claiming we're doing it for God, but they were actually. Which, which in essence is lying to the Holy Spirit because that's, that's, right. that's what he called it. So when we get to this next generation of leaders, you've got Stephen and Philip is going to come out of this group. And it's interesting because you just read that verse at first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. We're, now we're starting to vector in the idea about the, the Gentiles. First, yep. it started yep. with the converted Gentiles to Judaism. You start having these itch, issues. You've got some yep. racism, some prejudice, and as we go, we finally get that started next with end. the Jews. Then it goes to the Gentiles. But the Jews weren't happy about that. No, nope. <laughs> even the Jewish Christians were having a hard time with because it. they were struggling with the same thing. Like the guy, the Pope sent the guy. That's right. They're like, "Who are you? Well, you know, you're you're not one of us." Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, exactly. And the, so I, I really believe that's part of the reason why the thing was so severe with Ananias and Sapphira because. You know, Peter and the apostles realized that, you know what? I mean, what seems so great is going to be problematic because people are problematic. And so the the early deal of the church is just like it is today. I Still mean, going on. A lot of flawed people, a lot of flawed ideology, you yep. know, all the stuff that goes along with it. So that's kind of where we're headed as we continue through Acts. But, man, some still some really great examples that we're going to look at and sort of keeping Jesus going to the next generation. So... We always appreciate you guys on Unashamed. Uh, thank you for telling other people about it. The podcast still continues to grow. Uh, a lot of people are checking, and the you know a lot of the notes we get and our team gets from you. Uh, we know it's changing a lot of hearts and lives. So we just praise God for that. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes, and don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.